<laughs> no, we, we look like it's like a business. Wearing like a uniform, I don't know. Oh, yeah, no, oh waitresses. Would you like some food, How can sir? I help you, sir? This was a complete coincidence, by the way. We weren't supposed to wear this. Should I get changed? Wait, what are your suggestions? <laughs> Well, we, we could try a few things. I'll put something different on so it has a bit of variation. Otherwise, they're gonna think it's like a depressing video. And actually, <laughs> hostels are not depressing. Let me put a fun top on. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. Hello, everybody. How's it going? I'm here today with Miss Molly Pyatt. A lot of you probably already know her from Where's Molly, so go check out her channel if you haven't already. I'll link it down below. Today, we are doing a video all about hostels. I get asked a lot and so does Molly. Basically just like, in like a beginner's guide to staying in the hostels, there's so many behaviors, unspoken etiquettes, mm -hmm. things that you should do, things that you shouldn't do, and it's not really written down anywhere because it's not an official rule. And nothing's too like, it's not too serious, there's nothing hard, but if you've never been to a hostel, you just wouldn't think you wouldn't know that way. Yeah. So today, we are going to be discussing these topics and share our knowledge because we've both spent years in hostels now, so it's literally been years. I would say we, you know, we're pretty pro hostel girls now. We've, we've stayed on enough bunk beds, haven't we? <laughs> Enough. I still stay in them now, and it's actually still my preferred way to travel. Um, even though, you know, some people go to hostels because it's the cheapest and they can only afford to travel that way, but actually, I still choose to travel that oh, way. Oh, yeah, it's like you meet the most people in a hostel, like, it's it's so much more fun and so much more sociable. I know it's the best way to travel for backpackers right now. So, we're gonna start off with the beginning, all right, at the beginning of the day, and that is alarm clocks. Some people don't like to set alarms in hostels. I definitely think it's necessary. You gotta get out for an activity or something or gotta get a flight. Yeah, absolutely. But there are a few things with alarms that you should probably be aware of slash do slash do not do. Cause some people will have just had a crazy night out and they will be looking to light in. So obviously having an alarm set is gonna disrupt that. But if you do it in, a, in the right way um, and bear these things in mind, then it's absolutely fine. If you set an alarm, please make sure that you can wake up to it. <laughs> I, I sound silly, but I have been in several hostel rooms. In fact, nearly every hostel that I stay in, there is always someone, their alarm goes off in the morning, and they just don't wake up to it. And it's just going, but you and do. going. You do, and everyone else does, <laughs> but not the person. Like, no, make sure you can wake up to your own alarm, otherwise you're gonna have about three or four pillows in your face. Also, if you get up to your alarm, make sure you turn it off and don't just snooze it, um, because if you then go for a shower, which I'm sure you might do if you're getting up, um, it's gonna go off It's again. gonna go off again. And it's gonna piss people off. And if the shower, you know, is so loud, you can't hear it, um, everyone else in the room is waking up and it's, it is very annoying. It's actually happened to me before and I've been yes, that so. person that everyone hates and I'm like, oh, oh God, yeah. <laughs> to me I, and it's been when I went in the shower and it was an ensuite and I was literally just like mid shower and I could hear my alarm going off and I was like oh no yeah it's not you're not gonna make that many friends that no, way no you're not don't you do it. it it's not good <laughs> okay, so the second scenario is lights on in the morning so say you want to get up at 6 or 7 a.m would you turn the lights on? Do you think that's acceptable? Or is that acceptable? No, not the main lights. So every dorm will usually have like a main light system. And then most hostels these days I find um, have personal lights. So each bed will have its own plug um, and its own mini like reading light. Um, and that's a really good perk of a hostel if it does do that. I sometimes do look for that in a hostel because it's super useful. And if you're getting up early um, and rustling around in bags, which is very irritating, um, to minimize that rustling and that morning disturbance, I would definitely say make sure um, your bags are packed as much as you can like do as much as you can the night before So in the morning, you know, there's mineral disturbance for everyone else that's still asleep Especially if you've got a 4am flight or something. Oh god, yeah, and someone gets in a 2am from night out I kind of go with if it's light outside already I might just open the curtain just a little bit so you get a bit of natural light and then you can see what you're doing if it's still dark outside, I'd probably just try and use a torch and find myself a way around like that. I know it is easier sometimes just to switch the main light on. I mean, if it's really, really necessary, switch it on, but switch it off as soon as you can because yeah. it's, it is very annoying. But then it's another disturbing. way to get around that and get away around that if you're the sleeper in the situation, take an eye mask. That, that is my number one backpacking essential actually is taking a sleeping mask so that you know there's no light disturbance to yeah. affect your sleep. It'll help you in so many situations as yeah. well. For another problem that may arise in the morning is noise. People being super noisy. I reckon if they're still asleep, 
do keep your noise to a minimum. And if you do want to Skype someone, first of all, definitely don't do that in the room. I mean, most of the times the rooms don't have Wi-Fi anyway, I find. Mm -hmm. But don't just go right outside the room because a lot of the times in hostels, the walls are thin. People are still going to hear you. Mm -hmm. So if you do want to not necessarily make noise, but like have a full blown conversation with someone, move away from the sleepers. Hostels have common rooms, like hostels have social rooms, like they they accommodate for all of these situations, so make sure you just use them. Some of them even have like internet rooms with computers and places yeah. to make phone calls. So just be really aware um, and respectful of people in your room. And most of the time, those common rooms are open 24 seven, so you yeah. don't need to worry, uh, oh, like I need to Skype my parents at two in the morning, I don't know why I need to do that time zones or whatever. These aren't rules, like everyone in hostels, and if you're traveling, everyone is on different time frames and time schedules or some people are, might be relaxing when they're in a certain hostel, some might be you know, doing activity after activity. So you still do what you need to do, but just be respectful and maybe just be a bit mindful about it. Intertwining with like, treat others as you would like to be treated. If you want to be sleeping and someone's being super loud in the room, you wouldn't like that. So mm -hmm. just be mindful of other people, what you would like and what you wouldn't. And it's just about respecting other people's space. This is an interesting one. Aerosol sprays because I've always been told that you should never spray, it might be sun cream, bug spray, deodorant, hairspray. I personally think it's not really nice to spray aerosol sprays at all, even if it's a really unoffensive scent to you, so it might be like a really nice perfume or whatever. Some people in the room don't like it, you don't know if they do or not, but let's assume that they don't. They may even have like an allergy or something. You're like, you don't know. They're, they're not just gonna come up to you and go, hi, I'm allergic to aerosol sprays. I don't know, it's something to be aware of. Um, I would just do it in the bathroom or outside if that's possible. Bug spray, definitely outside. Spray, if you can do it outside. outside then do it outside. Some things I know you don't want to go all the way downstairs outside to put your deodorant on. <laughs> a bit excessive. But if you are going to be excessively, you know, you're doing a proper hair up and you've got loads of hairspray, like yeah. go to the bathroom, it's like, a, you know, like one of the main bathrooms or yeah. Be mindful. Just be mindful. I think that's going to be like the sort of uh, sum up of all of these points, honestly. Mm. Is it appropriate to walk around in your underwear in a dorm room? <laughs> <laughs> does. I, <laughs> do. I only do if you've gauged the situation, you, you know who's in your room and you're comfortable with them and you know that they probably wouldn't care less if you're walking around in your underwear. If I didn't know anyone in the room um, or if I thought someone was like a little bit creepy, I definitely wouldn't. I have actually had a situation, I was in Melbourne and Obviously you want to keep your shower time to a minimal because you're sharing a room with other people. Yeah. So I, you know, do what's possible in the bathroom and then I come out so other people can use it. So sometimes that means coming out in my underwear and I was in my underwear and I was just like drying myself in my towel and like we had a new team member, dorm member okay. come in <laughs> and I was like, hi! <laughs> but again, actually it kind of broke the awkwardness because yeah. it's not like I was naked, I would never be naked in a dorm room. No. Um, but please don't do that. <laughs> That's... That's something mean, else. Some people might like it, but I there don't are no rules. But I'm going to assume <laughs> that most people don't want to see that. Um, yeah. yeah. Like with the showers, obviously you've got one shower normally between your dorm, which can be eight people, it can be ten people, it can be twenty people. I've actually stayed in a thirty-two bed dorm before. Where was that? Amsterdam, I think. Amsterdam. Maybe it was thirty-two, but it was something around. That's around crazy. thirty-two. Yeah, it was pretty big. It was like a double bed on double bed dorm as well. So it was like. It was humongous. I've, I've stayed in triple bunk beds, I think, but triple even, like tch, tch, tch. yeah, and it's like a proper like ladder oh, wow. climb up. That That's was a workout. <laughs> Where was that? Guatemala, I want to say. Oh wow, is that even like, safe? Like that, all that weight? No, I'm like, it's not. <laughs> what's not safe is climbing up to it, and obviously the very top bunk is the least. Like no one even wants to go on a top bunk if it's like a double. Yeah, but you're not gonna get squashed if the whole thing collapses, which sounds quite likely. I mean. No, I, I mean, actually, I didn't even think about that. I'm going on top. Squash everyone else. I never think about getting swished. I'm just like, I just, I always I like, like top bunk. bunk. This is actually another thing to talk about. I like top okay. bunk because people can't, you know when people come in and chat and they sit on bunks? Yeah. I don't like my stuff being touched. Oh. So like, I always go on top because it's out of the way and people aren't really going to venture up just to sit down. Whereas if people come in. So and, you like the top bunk? Yeah. That. No. We can travel together. <laughs> yeah. Because normally perfect. if you're with a friend, I have been in that situation before. I felt like I wanted the bottom bunk because you're meant to want the bottom bunk. But you can always sit on your, your mate's bottom bunk. Like, oh yeah, I can sit on other people's beds, but they just can't sit on mine. <laughs> <laughs> 
something that I don't mind. I don't mind people sitting on my bed. <laughs> um, unless I read that through that. Well, no, I, well, it, it depends on the person, honestly. If they're like this creepy old man and they're sitting on my bed, I'm, I'd be like, what are you doing? Especially but, if you're sleeping. Yeah. <laughs> don't sit on people's beds when they're sleeping. But if it was like a friendly backpacker just chilling, if, especially if they had a top bunk and they just wanted to sit down, I'd be like, sure, go for it. People get drunk. And like, if I've got, okay. like, normally I'm traveling, so I've got documents and technology and stuff. That right, right. If sometimes when people are drunk, they get a bit careless and yeah. they'll move things and yeah <laughs> that's a, a benefit of the top bunk isn't it yeah then you can just have all of your stuff in your bed no one's gonna touch it but yeah personally i prefer the bottom <laughs> top, top or bottom guys comment which one you prefer comment down below <laughs> back to the point wearing underwear there are no rules but i guess again gauge the situation whether you feel comfortable and then obviously there still is that line of what's acceptable <laughs> yes Okay, then it comes to greeting roommates. So when you're just entering the room for the first time or someone else's, I think you should always greet them, even if it's just as simple as a smile. I think it, it just goes a Even if you're busy. Way. Yeah. Because sometimes you might not want to have a conversation. I've been times when I'm working and I don't, yeah. not necessarily want to have a conversation, but I'm... You acknowledge them. Yeah. Acknowledge. 100%. Just acknowledge that they walked, yeah, walked in. I tend to always just be like hi how's it going or uh, well that sounds very australian where have it? you come from where have you traveled to and acknowledge is really nice i find it quite off-putting if i walk into a dorm room and everyone's just like doing their own thing yeah it doesn't even look up no it's it's very closing and and you don't want to be that person you want to be open make friends and That's... you don't know how that person's feeling either like People might, won't come in and go, you know, I'm really nervous, I'm a solo traveller, but they might be nervous and be a solo traveller and your welcome and your acknowledgement could actually turn around their day and their experience. Absolutely. And also saying hello when they first walk in is the easiest way to do it. Once someone's walked in and you haven't said hello, it gets harder and harder and harder to break that ice. So yeah. the best thing I always find in any social situation is to nip it in the bud, make yeah. the eye contact straight away, smile, ask a few questions. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Branching off from that, I also think it's always important to invite people into whatever you're doing, if it's possible. Mm -hmm. If you know that you're about to go do an activity, do a bit of shopping, go out for some food, and you know that a couple of extra people can come along, always ask. Just say, hey, I'm about to do this, do you want to come with? Because you never know, that person might not know what they're doing with their day, they might feel really nervous, like you just said, and just for someone to ask them and invite them to something is so nice and i think it's something that not a lot of people do no. like some people do yeah but it's so much better to anyone do in your dorm is a potential friend and traveler like in the traveling world the world becomes very small and you cross paths with people a lot so for example i was in queenstown and this guy walked into my room and i was just about to walk up queenstown hill and i was solo traveling so it was a benefit for me to ask him and he was a solo traveler so he would really appreciated that offer and actually we became like best friends for like a week and then when I went to Sydney I saw him there so you never know you go. where doors are opening and when you're gonna see these people again so it's just friendly vibes all just around friendly vibes <laughs> and it's super easy when they are your roommate because you've already got that common connection hey we're in the same room let's go do something mm -hmm. also if you put in that groundwork you actually make friends with people in your dorm things are less likely to annoy your roommates mm -hmm. um so like getting up in the morning if you've like annoyed them by you know maybe not saying hello and and rustling around <laughs> and like switching the lights oh, you on just haven't really broken loud. the ice yeah yeah so you, then you're gonna annoy them more you're gonna annoy them even more <laughs> <laughs> it's just gonna be a pain in the ass <laughs> Don't be a pain in the Don't ass. Don't be a pain in the ass. No one likes that. Okay, we're going to talk about noise in the daytime. So say, scenario, someone is sleeping in bed at 2pm because either they're jet lagged or they're seriously hungover and you're just having a conversation with your mate in the room. Normally would be acceptable because yeah. it's like 2 in the afternoon. But what, what do you think about that? I would say that, again, people are on very different um, schedules and you can't not talk in the day but again be mindful if someone is sleeping like don't shout at the top of your voice and um, don't play your music to the highest volume and um, and if it is if you do want to be shouting to the you know top of your voice go downstairs and do it somewhere else yeah. um but that's just like 
out of respect. You don't have to do that, but again, be mindful. It's hard though, because sometimes someone may have like really pissed me off the day before. Like if they're just like outrageously drunk the whole day, and then if the next day they're really hungover. Yeah, they kind of deserve it. They kind of deserve it. <laughs> I don't feel any sympathy. And I'm like, I don't need to be quiet because you're hungover because you were pissing me off yesterday. Mm. <laughs> that's that's where the mutual respect comes in. Like if he'd be yeah. more respectful when he came in, you would then be more respectful because he's sleeping. Yeah, so it works both ways. Yeah, if I were really, really drunk and pissing people off one day, I probably wouldn't expect them to respect me the next day if I was really hungover. Mm. So yeah, mutual respect. Get what you give them. Sex in the dorm room. <laughs> Straight to it. Straight it to happens it. a lot. It's inevitable. Your alcohol, new friends, happy times. Happy times. Sex. Sexy times. <laughs> Your gonna be in a dorm room and you're gonna be sleeping and people are gonna have sex. It's not- At happening. some point. At some point. I'm not saying when you first walk into hostel that happens, <laughs> but after a year's of training- It's happened to me actually. I've walked into dorm rooms and it's just been going at it and I've been like, wow. Yeah. Um, I personally wouldn't do it, especially if other people are in the room. No. Um, Depends how drunk you are though. It does. I haven't personally <laughs> done it, but if you are in the room and no one, no one else is in there apart from the, the shagging couple, we were saying, I think definitely just cough or just let them know that you're there. Yeah. Because sometimes they might not know that you're there and then like, then they'll be like, oh crap, you know, let, let's This is an acceptable, I should probably stop. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not very nice. But then like, nice. you don't have anywhere else to do it. So I can totally understand why people do it. Like that is your home when you're traveling. Um, but again, when you're on the other side, if you do experience it, you'll realize that it's not the nicest thing when you, have a flight in the morning or want to get up or just want a decent night's sleep but I have been in a few situations and if you know coughing or ruffling around in my duvet doesn't duvet you don't get duvets you get sheets <laughs> you don't get duvets if that doesn't you know stop them or make them conscious of your um you being there then I go into my bag and I always have earphones with me so I put my earphones in that blocks out the noise and I go back to sleep. The only time that that doesn't work is when they're on the same bunk as you. Mm. You've got a bit of rocking going on. <laughs> when there was the earthquake in New Zealand I was on a double bed and the, the feeling of the earthquake felt exactly the same as when someone's having sex on the same oh bunk as <laughs> you. I'm not on a bunk bed right now but what? What? When you're on the same bunk as someone and the movement is there, like you can, earphones aren't gonna solve that. So there are things in hostels that you can't avoid and you can't go down there and be like, stop having sex. Cause if they wanna have sex, they're gonna have sex. You just gotta hope that they don't do that. And that when they're aware that you're there, they stop that. Yeah. Where should you put your bags and your valuables when you're in a dorm room? Because obviously there are gonna be people in there that you don't necessarily trust. You've only just met them. Even if you've known them a day or two, you still can't fully trust them. Um, hostels nearly all the time have lockers. Make sure that you have a padlock with you because most of the time you do have to have your own padlock mm -hmm. to lock them up. And it does vary actually the size of them. Some of them, you know, it's it's just a small one enough for like your phone, your passport and money. I've actually been to ones in Bali that fit your whole backpack in. So like nearly life size, human size uh, lockers. Human size, just but... put yourself in there. <laughs> and actually a lot of them are under the bunk beds. So you have, each yeah, bunk bed has two really big ones. drawers. Um, which are pretty big. I think it's definitely something to look for when you're actually booking a hostel is to make sure that there's lockers. It's just always good to put your valuables away. I never lock up just my clothes and stuff because I always just think these are so old, no one's gonna want them anyway. And they've <laughs> never been stolen. But they can be replaced easily. But memory cards, laptops, cameras. drones, yeah, expensive cameras, you're definitely gonna lock them up. And I would say, so when you're sleeping as well, you never know who else is in your room. I just don't take any chances. I've had a lot of questions recently um, from girls who said they've always stayed in the female dorm and can they stay in a mixed dorm? Both of us are pro mixed dorms. I find them a lot more fun. I find them normally a lot more relaxed, mostly because I feel like female dorms tends to be girls who are a bit more tentative or you come to realize that staying in a mixed dorm is more dynamic. Yeah, and, in the room and it's not any less safe at all no. like you know you can have females that you're not going to trust just the same that it's going to be males that you're not going to trust like it it doesn't make a difference at the end of the day but i would say if you feel safe for going in a female's room like and you are a solo traveler traveling for the first time I can understand why you'd want to be in like a single sex dorm. As well as being in a mixed dorm, I prefer like larger dorms because they, they can range from anything up in four bed dorms to 32 bed dorms. That's <laughs> a lot of people. But it's good times. Like there's, you're guaranteed to have someone there that's going to be your 
partner in crime for a night out. You can always ask, yeah, always ask someone to go out for food, always have something to do something with. And when you come back, because everyone is like, Sorry guys, we just switched cameras. If you're looking for, you know, making friends and a really sociable experience, it's kind of like people are passing ships in dorms, mm -hmm. uh, everyone's on their own agenda, so if you've got a bigger dorm, you're more likely to, when you go back to your dorm, have people there. Yeah, and it's just more sociable, you meet more people. I've walked into a four bed dorm before and it's been a group of three friends, they were very closed and I was Did just like, okay. Oh, okay. It's not really a hostel experience. Like you, you're paying the same yeah. price, so it's fine. It's still yeah. budget-wise, it, it works. But um, yeah. in terms of the social side of it, which a lot of people like me buy into with a hostel, yeah. I prefer bigger dorms. Yeah. And you're also kind of technically more likely to get a bottom bunk or top bunk or the bunk of your choice <laughs> because less people will have arrived. So when it comes to booking a hostel, there's a few really good. Um, I guess online agents which you can try. So there's Hostel World, Hostel Bookers, and Booking.com. Mm -hmm. They all have stuff for everywhere in the world. So if you are looking to book a hostel, I'll link all three of them down below and all three of them are mm -hmm. brilliant. The main hostels will always be listed on their sites, but in places like Philippines and Indonesia, sometimes they don't have the budget or the technological awareness of <laughs> websites. They might not advertise, advertise on there. So sometimes turning up is actually um, better and see, you know, getting the word on the street. If you know you're going to be in a particular place for a particular day or it's for an event, so for the full moon party in Thailand, for example, or a festival mm -hmm. or anywhere in particular. Or like New Year in Sydney. Oh, peak peak times in Australia and yeah. New Zealand. I would book as far in advance as possible because they get booked out. Trust me from experience, I was in Byron Bay and I hadn't booked my accommodation and I turned up wanting to be spontaneous, which is you know, an attraction to traveling and there was no accommodation. <laughs> I had to make friends with this guy at a random travel agency um, who had a friend that, that had a friend that had a camper van that I slept in for the night. Dreamy. You're literally <laughs> like, you, you become a homeless person. Airbnb, if all else fails, have a look on Airbnb. Yeah, wow. or try couch surfing. It just saves, it saves the stress though, just booking in advance. Yeah. If you do know the time you're gonna be there, book it. And a lot of the websites, I think booking.com, I can't remember with Hostel World, but some of them you don't actually have to pay in advance and some of them is free cancellation. So there's no harm in, in booking in advance. Yeah, and they always say on those websites, it says what facilities it has. So if it has lockers, if they wi do Wi-Fi, oh yes. Free activities, breakfast included, laundry, all of the rest. So make sure you have a look at those things. It'll be a big help when choosing your hostel. So we're just gonna finish off with a little bit of a roundup some of our top tips and some things to bear in mind when staying in a hostel. My first kind of tip would be, if you remember, try to reconfirm your booking. If you've made the booking like far in advance, reconfirm your booking 48 hours before. I've not done this before. It was in Bali and I booked the hostel about a month in advance. Me and my friend Helena, we rocked up to it quite late at night and they didn't think that I was coming. Yeah, I didn't think I had to reconfirm, but anyway, they didn't think I was coming. They sold the bed to someone else. Me and Helena had to go top to tail that night in the bed. <laughs> Not ideal, even though we booked it and I thought it was all okay. So if you do remember, do just drop the hostel an email or mm -hmm. if you can, phone them. Let, you, let them know that you're still coming. Um, and it doesn't do any harm to do that. If you are solo traveling in a hostel and for example, most of the rooms are booked out and you do find yourself in a small dorm or in a dorm where you aren't gelling with the people there, get involved with the activities. All hostels will hold like free, free drinks at seven o'clock or, or ladies night yeah. and events. And that is to get you guys at the hostels to mingle. Um, and they really do work like that. Most they people help. will get involved. You'll meet people um, and they do them pretty much every day. So get involved with the activities. Even if you don't really like the vibe or the sound of it, just go for the social, just to pop your head in and say hello. The worst that's gonna happen is that you'll absolutely hate it and you can just leave. Like, yeah. you know, there's no... Most of them are downstairs in the hostel, like in the hostel bars. Yeah. So it's not like you even have to like go somewhere. But if you do meet people, which you probably will, and you'll probably have a great time, yeah. then you know all the better. Open the doors, traveling is about opening doors um, and just taking every opportunity. So definitely get involved with what the hostels do. The next thing is a few things to bring. So your top thing was an eye mask and earplugs, mm. isn't it? Mine is a pillow. I have, um, it's like a thick memory foam pillow. It almost looks like a bit of a head brace when I have it on and it like just ties up here. It just means I can sleep anywhere. So 
I need, I've never heard of these. I need to get one. I'll I'll put a link in the description bar below and I'll put a little picture here of what it actually looks like. Um, but it's amazing and I think you can use it for the whole of your travels and then if your hostel pillow is really shit, which most, most of them are. They're like this thin. Then, Might as well not have a pillow. Then you can just like <laughs> slide your own little pillow underneath there and it just helps them. I usually take as well a speaker. I mean, I know when people pack minimally you don't have space for a speaker, but I prioritise my speaker um, because when you're getting ready for a night out or just to break the tension and the silence, I just love music in any situation. It makes so. it so much more chill. Obviously don't just pump your music out whenever and wherever. Sometimes people don't want to listen to music and sometimes people want to sleep and it's not your room. Yeah, solely it, so. It, it is difficult in hostels because you are going to come across so many different people. Most people are going to be very easy not, going. Yeah, easy going. That's a good word to use. And just open to new things, wanting to meet new people. That's that's generally the type of person that you're going to come across in a hostel. But not everyone is like that. No. Some people are going to be very nervous, very shy. It might be their first time backpacking. Some people are going to be a bit creepy. You're going to come across creeps. You just got to be prepared for it. Prepared for those situations. Hostels are fun because of all these things we've mentioned in this video. But they're also challenging. And that challenge isn't a bad thing. You know, that's what develops you and makes you grow when you're traveling but cliche and all just that. be aware <laughs> that you might come across some difficult situations and um, I, what we've emphasized throughout this video is mindfulness just be mindful of the people around you um, and you'll smash it you'll be the perfect backpacker in a hostel yeah I believe in you you I do you can do it yeah <laughs> good luck to anyone if you haven't stayed in a hostel before it is daunting like the first time you stay in a dorm room because you're like oh my god but it's fine and if you don't love it you don't have to stay in one again. It's definitely something worth trying at yeah. some point in your life. A great accommodation for backpackers. Save so much more money than staying in a hotel. And spend more on the drink. And you're gonna socialize more. Yeah, absolutely. You're just gonna meet more people. I think your, your backpacking experience is gonna be so much better. Like I have some of my favorite memories from backpacking just being in hostels. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Go subscribe, sub subscribe to Molly. I'll have her Yay. link down below. Um, are we going to be doing a video on your channel? Yeah. What are we going to be doing on your channel? We haven't filmed it yet. Um. We're going to be filming a video on solo travel on Molly's channel. So I'll have that link down below so you can go and watch that one. And I will see you in the next video. Okay, goodbye. Yay.